Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. One of my professors in college, his name was Dr. Billy Wheeler. He's passed now. Uh, he used to say to me, he said, son, uh, he said, son, the three sides to a story, doesn't matter what the story is, there are three sides to it. There's your side, there's my side, and then ultimately, there's the truth. So here it is, a few days ago, this political nuisance, this despot, this internet nuisance is what I call him one Chilufia Tayali guys I'm a state witness in a case against him this is not a secret and and side note guys side note some of you seem to think that when you talk about an active case in court you seem to think that that is contempt you need to define what contempt of court is it's not contempt when you talk about the happenings of a court case when you talk about what happened in court or when you talk about what what the case is about that's not contempt contempt of court means a disrespect and a disregard and a disdain for the court and the court proceedings nobody here is being disrespectful towards the court Nobody here is being, uh, dis dis speaking disparagingly or speaking um, negatively about the court system or this court case. Make sure you make the distinction between contempt of court and discussing what happens in a court case, in an active court case. newspaper. When you open the Daily Mail, you read about, oh, yesterday, uh, Bowman Lusamba went to court. This is what was said. And it was, that's not contempt. You're simply reporting what happened. Contempt is if you disdain the court. If you speak about the judge and you say, oh, no, this, this court process is rubbish. And you say things like that. You speak disparagingly of the court and its proceedings. That is contempt. Okay. So just to be clear, this, this is not contempt. So last week, Friday, as many of you know, some of you know, I'm a... I'm a uh, Oh, a state witness in a case against this Chilofia Tayali. Now, let's be clear. Some of you followers of him, because I know some of you on here, and, and honestly, I don't like the fact that you guys are on here. I don't. I would prefer that you stay within your lane, within his circumference. But if you are a Chilofia Tayali follower, I don't want you here. I don't. I don't want you to taint me. Okay? I, I simply don't want you here. But some of you Chilifia Te'ali followers will jump on here and say, but why can't you just forgive your friend? Eh? Why are you testifying against him? What, do you not know? Do you not know that not too long ago Chilifia Te'ali was a state witness in a case in a case against Bachishim Bakambuidi. And it was it was it was on the strength of Tayali's testimony that Bachishim Bakambuidi was found guilty and sentenced. Do you not know that? What you don't know that? You've forgotten that? Because <clears throat> this is what I find disturbing and interesting about Chilifia Ta'ali followers is that they seem to defend him in things that he himself has done to other people. Ta'ali is not new to this thing about testifying against other people and having and having and having them sent to prison. He's done that before. He's testified against Bakambuidi. He was a state witness in a case against Bachishim Bakambuidi. Bakambuidi was ultimately found guilty, was sentenced because of Tayali. So 
far be it from you guys to start preaching to me about, no, how can you do that to your friend? Well, first of all, let's be clear, he's not my friend. Shalif Yatayali is not my friend. Let's keep that clear. <clears throat> Because, you know, you guys, some of you guys, you're so spiritually minded, you're no earthly good. Everything you shroud in scripture. No, that to forgive and forget, that is your friend. That's got nothing to do with it. It's got nothing. You're, you're, mix, you're comparing apples with oranges. You're trying to mix oil with water. It doesn't work. And that's not the, that's not the case. If there's, if there's an issue that has to be dealt with through the courts of law, it's got nothing to do with forgiveness. It's got everything to do with justice. And besides, guys, Tayali had my friend killed. Nsamansa, Chilifu Te'ali set in motion a series of events that led to the ultimate and untimely death of my friend Nsamasama. You think that I wouldn't testify against Te'ali? Of course I would. I'll do it with my eyes wide open and a clear conscience. Let's be clear about that. So anyway, so here it is. Friday, I went to the courthouse and I'm sitting in the courthouse, in the courtroom, sitting in the courtroom in the corner and here comes Chilifia Te'ali he walks up to me boy very in a very in a he thinks that he's intimidating but let's not forget Chilifia Te'ali is a short little guy did you guys not know this I'm not body shaming him I'm just trying to explain to you that I don't know where Tayali's confidence comes from in terms of his physical prowess because he has none there is no physical prowess I mean just just because the guy jogs it doesn't mean that he's a powerhouse the guy is is a little runt he's he's like this short in Zambia we don't do this we do this he's a little short guy and I'm a big guy. I mean, I'm I'm a big guy. And I know there's some of you in the comment section. You're going to start saying, but well, size doesn't matter. It does in some cases. It does in this case. Okay. So Tali walks up to me. And, you know, he sort of trudges towards me, and he says, "You what you done are you here? And this is in the courthouse. This is in the courtroom. And then, you know, he's pointing at me. I'm sitting down. He's standing up. He's standing up looking down at me. And I'm sitting down looking up at him. Now, <clears throat> for those of you that know anything about body language, that's a power play. Now you have to understand what when someone is towering over you, when someone is 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 standing above you and yelling at you, in their minds they are in a position of power. In their minds they think that they have vanquished you. Now, if you're going to engage in a physical confrontation, the best thing you do in that scenario is you stand up. Now, had I stood up, I would have towered over Tayali, because Tayali is a little short guy. He's, he's like a little tiny guy. So had I stood up, I would have towered over him. So the moment had I stood up, he would have then changed from speaking down at me because I was in a, a sitting position. Had I stood up, he would have been looking at me doing this. <laughs> Now, let's let's be clear about something, and, and I want you to hear me out. I don't want to gloss over this. I don't. I, I want you guys to get the, the I want you to get my line of logic. Hear me out. He got upset because I make reference to his wife in this way. I've always said it, and I will keep saying it, and I will say it again. Tayali is very disrespectful to that Ethiopian girl. Very disrespectful. Now, before you start saying to me, but well, that's his house. That's his business. No, it's not his business when he brings it on social media. When he starts saying, my wife is away in Ethiopia. I'm accepting applications from you young girls to give me sexual favors. Why this? My wife is away. 
Muke se muka mpele kwa ama sexual favors Ama services Na ama applications Nde chisachani Nde poka Musalula Ale salula umakashi wakwe And then here's the thing This is what I find annoying Is that he's trying to normalize A very abnormal behavior In front of you lot And there are some of you That are so impressionable You find that funny You find it hilarious You think it's normal For a married man To disrespect his spouse On social media Under the umbrella of Yo I'm just joking I'm just making fun I'm just making jokes At the expense of your wife That's why we step in that's where to angi na mabantu iwenga wabika pa social media wachiposa pa social media wachisa kwa tule salu lo mkashivu owe owe pa social media uleba salu la uleti yo hali ya ku, ku, ku Ethiopia so ine imwe wakashana imwe lekeni mwe wakweti ama applications muke se muka 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 mbombele po ine because I'm here kuunga nda by myself mu salu la and you think it's normal eli wonga tuwalando kutu warufianya Natuwalando kutu warufianya Why? Because iwe wali chibika pa social media Na ifwe Fwe balefo kuchita Fwe balefo kuchita Protect this issue The sanctity The sanctity of what a marriage should be And the responsibility that you have As an influencer You cannot peddle that and make it sound normal when you know good and hell well that it's very abnormal. Hili wafuru wanga tuwalanda ko. Wafuru wanga wasaru no mkashi uwe tuwalanda ko. Hili on top of that, uriya mkashi ana uriya, the reason why he can do what he does. Pantu te mwina zambi. And I've often said this and I will keep saying it and I will not stop saying it. The only reason Tayali gets away with what he gets away with is because he's married to a foreign girl. If that girl was from Chinsadi, Naba Fiashi Fiyo win a win. Naba brothers win a win. You think Tayali can get away with half of that nonsense he does on, on Facebook? He can't. He can't. Why? Because he can be chakara. Mitu walikuwa tenita mbiba na ye With proper Haba fiashi Kutu wa hachi tefi ya msarula Pa Facebook Baku panya Na ama brothers wino wino Bwana kutu baku sansa Masa feti wena weka tari Kala panshiwe Ule seba ni umachewe so Chilishani Ule chindika But he knows He's not He doesn't Worry about that Because he knows Sega is an Ethiopian girl that doesn't have any family here. She's basically on her own. There, I said it. Is that is that difficult? Is that difficult for you to accept? And anytime you get an influencer that normalizes what is abnormal, you Dwanzi followers, Mweba Shipula, you think it's funny. It's not funny. There's nothing funny about that. That's the reason that's what I talk about. So here it is. He came to the courthouse. You know, he's a little guy. He's a tiny little short guy. And he's talking down to me. He's threatening to to, to hit me and, and not to beat me, to hit me. And I'm sitting down there, and in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm sitting on the bench. In my mind, I'm thinking, if I stand up, this is going to escalate. It's going to escalate. Because he wasn't joking, I wasn't joking. So I decided, you know, I'm just going to sit here. So he starts yelling, and, and the longer I sat, the louder he yelled. And the louder he yelled, the more people came into the into the courtroom now at this time i'm thinking to myself i hope somebody records this you know because typically you're not supposed to record anything in the courthouse but nobody did you know now what tayali doesn't realize and, and this is something that i want him to know right now he doesn't realize that all of that showboating all of the threats, all of the, you know, the bravado, and, you know, he's a little guy, he's a little short guy. All of this stuff, he doesn't realize that I'm actually a karate expert. 
Some of you don't know this about me. Did you know this about me? Did I ever tell you about this? Well, let's be clear. Maybe not an expert, but I did take a karate class when I was in my, 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 my teen years. Okay, let's, let's be clear about that. And I'm not joking when I say that. I took a karate class, a very intense course in karate. I went up to the yellow belt, okay? I didn't get up to green, but I was almost there. And what Tayali doesn't realize, and this is what I find interesting about this whole thing, is that he doesn't know how close he came to disaster. I mean, when he was threatening, in my mind I was thinking, any moment now, I'm going to execute the court of blood technique. Now, some of you may not know, some of you may not have heard of the court of blood technique, but the court of blood technique, you see these two hands here? Lethal weapons. These are lethal weapons. They've been known to stop someone who didn't know that it was coming. Now, I was going to execute the court of blood technique, and let me explain what the court of blood technique is. It's the court of blood technique is where I strike him, and a quart of blood comes out. The man hits the ground, he's dead in three and a half seconds before he hits the ground. That's called the quart of blood technique. Now, everything in me, okay, let's be clear, I did everything within my power to withhold and restrain myself from performing the quart of blood technique. Because I knew, I said, listen, if Kataali keeps talking, boy, and I execute the court of blood technique, man's going to be dead. I'm going to have a murder charge on me. They're going, listen, not only am I going to cease to be a, a state witness, they're going to carry me out of here in shackles. Because now, now, I got a, I got a murder charge. But I didn't want to go that way. I didn't. I restrained myself for such a time as this, the word of God says. I restrained myself. I held myself back because I knew in that very moment that if I gave in to my urge, if I acquiesced, if I succumbed, if I yielded to my desire to knock his head clean off, I'd have a murder charge. And who needs the aggravation of a murder charge? I mean, goodness. I got a family, man. I got a wife. I got kids. Who needs that aggravation? Who, who needs the aggravation of going to prison on a murder charge because I executed the court of blood technique? I'm not doing it. I am not doing it. If Tayali goes to jail, if he goes to prison, he's going to go to prison. But, but far be it from me to murder him or to kill him because of the court of blood technique. I'm not doing it. All right. So that's what happened. So anyway, so, you know, he starts yelling. And so I said to him, I said, look, you better step back. You better step back. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. And then finally, the, the court officers started telling him, they said, look, Mr. Tayali, that yelling that you're doing, this courthouse is not for that. You get in trouble for that. So he walks out of the door and when he gets to the door, he turns around and he says, if you're man enough, come outside and let's deal with this man to man. And I, I said to him, I said, Tayali, you're this short. And, and, and the court of blood technique, boy, you're going to be in a world of hurt, I said to him. I said, you're going to be in a world of hurt, Tayali. You know, I'm, I'm not your run-of-the-mill guy. You know, these hands, they may look, look simple to you. But these things are lethal, man. I mean, these, these, things, these, these things will knock you out. I will knock the black off of you, I said to him. I said, I'll, I'll hit you so hard, it'll rattle your ancestors. That's what I said to him. I said, boy, I tell you what, I will knock you upside your head so hard, you will forget your name. You think you're six feet tall by the time I'm done with you. But anyway, I didn't do it. You know, and thank God I didn't do it. Well, that's what happened. Now you run. You run and tell that. <laughs> Exclusive.
Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.